Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Burnt City Shar e Sukte is a lost ancient city which looks an awful lot like a labyrinth. It's known more simply as the Burnt City, and it's an archaeological site from the Bronze Age. Archaeologists say it is associated with the ancient Giraffe culture. Believe it or not, this was one of the very first urban settlements in southeastern Iran, founded around the year 3200 BC. It may not have been the very first city, but it is one of the earliest representations of a complex society in this part of the world. Archaeologists have discovered houses, burial mounds, ancient relics hiding underneath the desert sands, and a lot of really great stuff. The settlement was probably built first 5,000 years ago and then occupied over four main phases. That was up until 1,800 BC, when it seems to have been abandoned completely. One of the coolest things discovered here came in 2006, when a team of researchers found the earliest artificial eyeball in the world. The eyeball was covered in a thin layer of gold and engraved with an iris, and was worn by a woman. This woman had, for whatever reason, lost her eyeball, and somehow they had made her a replacement one. While the city isn't actually a labyrinth, it was laid out in a maze-like pattern. Looking at it from above, it would appear that these streets, alleys, and byways of the city were all created to resemble a labyrinth. It's hard to say if this was intentional or not. Whether this has something to do with their ancient belief system, or it was just a total fluke, scientists don't really know. Number 9. The Labyrinth Under Canossus The island of Crete in Greece is a place of gods, monsters, and labyrinths. The Palace of Canossus is one of the most spectacular UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the world. This is the actual location of the legendary labyrinth of the Minotaur, as told in Greek mythology. The palace was where the king lived, and the labyrinth was supposedly where he kept the great minotaur beast that his wife gave birth to. Canossus can be found just outside the modern city of Heraklion, and is still considered the oldest city in Europe. Humans have been present here since at least 7,000 BC, and Canossus was the center of the Minoan civilization. It was the Minoans who rose out of the Mediterranean at the same time as the Greeks in the Bronze Age, and started to build their great palaces around 1900 BC. It was under the Great Palace of Canossus where the megalithic labyrinth was built to hold the beast. The myth says that King Minos had offended the gods by keeping a beautiful white bull that was supposed to be sacrificed to them. He lied about it, and as punishment, Zeus became angry and made the queen fall in love with the bull. She became pregnant and gave birth to a monster, but King Minos was stuck with it since it was given to him by the gods. The creature was so powerful that no cage could contain it, and it would only eat human flesh. So King Minos built a megalithic labyrinth underneath his palace on the island of Crete to hold the beast. Unfortunately, the palace was struck by an earthquake in 1700 BC, and much of Canossus was destroyed. Even after they made repairs, disaster struck again in 1450 BC, and the Minoans started to weaken after a sequence of natural disasters and invaders from Greece. Yet somehow, despite all odds, many of the old city structures remain somewhat intact. The palace is still there, although the actual labyrinth is a bit more difficult to prove. There certainly is something underneath the foundation of the Palace of Knossos, but we don't actually know if it was really a labyrinth, or if it really held a minotaur. But get this, there is a cave system about one mile away near the site of Phaistos, which some historians have speculated could have been the entrance to the labyrinth if it wasn't under the palace. Perhaps there was a labyrinth, but just not in the way that we thought. Number 8. Biggest Labyrinth in the World the largest labyrinth in the entire world can be found in the rolling green hills of northern Italy. It's one of the best kept secrets in the country, and is unrivaled in its scope and size. It's called the Masone Labyrinth, and the whole thing is made from bamboo plants. It was put together by the famous Italian designer Franco Maria Ricci. Unfortunately though, the biggest labyrinth in the world is not that ancient. The maze only opened in 2015 in the small village of Fontanelato. It covers approximately 7 hectares, 
It's made of 20 different species of bamboo plant, and at the very center, it contains a pyramid-shaped chapel. But to be completely honest, you can't even really get an idea of just how massive this thing is by looking at pictures. The only way to reach the heart of this labyrinth is to maneuver yourself through nearly two miles of intricately winding pathways. That's a lot of work, especially considering you'll probably get lost a few times. It took the designer 30 years to make this dream become a reality, and he actually based it off the story of the Minotaur from Crete. Number 7. Mysterious Indian Labyrinth Archaeologists have discovered an ancient labyrinth in India. This labyrinth dates back 2,000 years and has a bizarre connection to some clay tablets discovered in Greece. The clay tablets were found at the site of Pelos. They date back to 3,200 years ago, and they have images of labyrinths sketched on them. Labyrinths that look exactly the same as the one that's just been found in India. It's all quite mysterious, but here's what you need to know. In India, the labyrinth was excavated by researchers from Tirupur. They uncovered the mysterious maze along an ancient trading route on the east coast. The labyrinth was hidden underneath a temple that had been built over the original site, and the archaeologists had to dig underneath it just to get to the remains. The labyrinth is about 56 by 56 feet, a perfect square. But what exactly the labyrinth signifies is still a major mystery. According to the research team, the labyrinth may have been part of a kind of ritual. The person who walked from the entrance to the middle without getting lost may have supposedly had their wishes fulfilled. As for what the labyrinth in India has to do with pictures of labyrinths on clay tablets in Greece, that's another problem altogether. It's a pretty big coincidence that they would have made exactly the same labyrinths, and so whoever designed the one in India was almost definitely a copycat. Somebody 2,000 years ago seems to have gotten the blueprints from Greece and then built their own all the way in India. Number 6. The Labyrinths of Bolshoi Zayatsky The labyrinths of Bolshoi Zayatsky are nothing short of breathtaking. They're the biggest group of ancient stone labyrinths that can be found anywhere on the planet, located on the island of the same name in rural Russia. These labyrinths have never been properly studied by archaeologists and were only briefly analyzed by a group of researchers from St. Petersburg. It's been theorized the labyrinths are probably around 2,500 years old, but nobody really knows. Some say they only date back to the Middle Ages. They were built of stone but are mostly grown over now and covered in vegetation. Still, just by looking at the pictures, it seems pretty obvious these things were used for rituals. Another really interesting fact is that between all of the Zolovetsky Islands in Russia, there are 35 labyrinths total. Each one is made up from boulders, and nobody knows the history of any of them. They measure up to nearly 75 feet in diameter, and most are shaped to form a spiral. Some believe the ancient builders could have been trying to recreate the form of two serpents within the labyrinths. At the end of the day, these are some of the most mysterious monuments anywhere. Nobody knows their history and we don't even know exactly when they were made. Other strange things have been found on the islands as well. On Bolshoi, there have been over 850 tons of boulders that seem to hold absolutely no purpose. In all likelihood, somebody had gathered these boulders and was planning on making even more labyrinths, but never got around to it. Number 5. The Tonto Labyrinth the Tonto Labyrinth is a little different from the other labyrinths I've told you about since you can't physically walk around it. Instead, the labyrinth was carved into a chunk of plaster within the inner room of the Casa Grande Monument in Arizona. The monument can be found in the Gila Valley, a place which was farmed by a group of desert people who lived here thousands of years ago. They had developed massive irrigation projects and extensive trade networks to deal with other Native American groups across the continent. They lasted over 1,000 years, and it wouldn't be until 1450 AD that the people of the Gila Valley disappeared. The biggest monument left standing is a small adobe structure known as the Great House. It's a pretty sad structure these days, sheltered from the sun by an extremely old and outdated metal roof. It may have been used as a house, but some archaeologists believe it functioned at least a little as an astronomical observatory. This is because some of the windows are aligned with the positions of the sun and moon at very specific times of year, while each wall points to one direction of the compass. But what does this have to do with the labyrinth? The truth is that nobody really knows. The design is on the north wall of the Great House, 
and there is no context for what it could possibly mean. Researchers also don't know when it was made, saying it could have been over 1,000 years ago, or it's just a recent piece of graffiti. Number 4. Stone Age Labyrinth Researchers in Denmark have just discovered a series of enclosures from the Stone Age. These enclosures are shaped like labyrinths, and scientists are busy trying to figure out what purpose they served. The archaeologists working on this mission were from the Museum Southeast Denmark, and they were the ones responsible for finding the remains of walls and posts from the Neolithic period. These walls covered a space of nearly 60,000 square feet. It was a huge building. And according to lead archaeologist Pernil Rhodes-Sloth, it really could have been used as a labyrinth. Researchers notice that the entrances don't exactly line up like the traditional entrances should. The building also appears to have been built in extending rows, each one offset to make the design extremely confusing. In simple terms, the structure was built in such a way that you would have had to take a lot of twists and turns to get from one entrance to the other, which makes them think of a labyrinth. The biggest mystery now is trying to figure out what the purpose of this huge labyrinth was for people living in Stone Age Denmark. Number 3. The Labyrinth of Witchcraft Island There is an island in Sweden which was once home to a cult of witches, and before them, mysterious Stone Age rituals. It can be found just off the Swedish mainland, and these days is something of a geological nature reserve. It's called Bla Jungfrun Island, and it's filled with mysterious caves, a history of darkness, and even a stone labyrinth. In Swedish folklore, this island was a meeting place for evil witches. On every Monday and Thursday, the witches would meet here on their own private island and openly worship the devil. This story has been part of the local folklore at least since the 16th century, but could go back even further. There's even a rumor that says anyone who dares remove a single stone from the labyrinth on the island will be cursed with a lifetime of limitless bad luck. Looking beyond the myths and legends, there really is a bizarre labyrinth here. And for that matter, rituals did happen here as well. Researchers have already identified two main caves where rituals definitely took place during the Mesolithic Stone Age. One of the caves was found hollowed out by Stone Age men, who built a fireplace inside to help conduct ceremonies. It was like one big altar. The only thing we don't know is what exactly the rituals were. That is, we don't know why the stone labyrinth was built, if the rituals happening in the caves really were some kind of witchcraft, or if witches ever did dwell on the island. Number 2. The Secret Labyrinth Under Rome Underneath the floor of the Colosseum in Rome, where men fought lions and decapitated one another to the roar of the crowd, there is a labyrinth. It's not all that secret, but it's definitely not common knowledge either. In fact, the very heart of Rome's Colosseum is a labyrinth of passageways and mysterious chambers, which together are known as the Hypogeum. And for the first time in modern history, this underground maze of slowly eroding stone passages is open to the public. It's been restored by funds given by an Italian luxury shoe company and is now open for everyone to see. The Hypogeum was once housing for gladiators, prisoners, and wild beasts from all over the world. It was a labyrinth of interconnected chambers where gladiators prepared for battle, where the Romans kept their slave prisoners in cramped metal cages, and where all the actual workers at the Colosseum carried out their duties. It was kind of like a backstage area, right underneath the Colosseum and out of the public's view. Number 1. The Lost Labyrinth of Hawara The most mysterious labyrinth in the entire world is the one supposedly buried underneath the Hawara Pyramid in Egypt. This pyramid can be found near the Fayum Oasis, and it looks like nothing but a giant pile of sand. In fact, you wouldn't even know this was a pyramid because it's eroded so badly it looks like a natural hill. There is nothing grand or spectacular about it, unless you use your imagination. This big chunk of dirt had once been smooth and covered in limestone, built by the great Egyptian ruler King Amenemhat III in the 12th dynasty. Not far from the Hawara Pyramid is a smaller one that the king had built for his daughter, Neferupta. The pyramid is definitely real, but what's underneath it is the real mystery. Because according to ancient scholars, Amenemhat III built some kind of strange labyrinth complex underneath the desert floor, right in front of his pyramid. This thing was called Ankh Amenhat, 
and it was where the king went to be worshipped as a god. After his death, the labyrinth remained open to the public. It was there all the way up until the 6th century AD and was mentioned by multiple Greek historians. The Greek historian Herodotus described it as having 3,000 rooms, connected by a series of winding, maze-like passages. If true, this would be one of the most spectacular monuments ever built by the ancient Egyptians, rivaling even the pyramids of Giza. The only issue is that nobody has ever actually found it, so we don't really know if it's down there or not. Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time for more videos like these. Bye!